last week on the Glass Cannon Podcast. This is an interesting little room. You see ladders connecting the floor of this two-story... It's a library. Library. Oh. oh. That's what those little uh, marks Do they are. slide? Oh, I love a, I love I a love sliding. They do out. slide. There's three separate balconies awesome. above, and you see books. Brother Ramius, you're going to love this room. Okay, let's go. As you come around the corner, a creature hiding behind one of the shelves jumps out directly at you. It is an insectoid Ooh. looking Whoa. creature. There's a lot going on. The two of you are dazzled for one round. You're dazzled for one minute. Oh. oh. All right, Chalitha is going to attack because I got the bless and I also can move into flanking position. So 19 to hit this Dejiriac. Flat footed. Is a hit. Yeah! yeah. Oh, huge. Seven points of damage. A little bit of Roy Mustang for you. Pow! <laughs> <laughs> and now it is the creature's turn. It's a 25 and a 28. Oh. 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 It's, a, oh. it's a hit and a crit. Oh, oh no! And Talitha goes down. Asa goes a little feral, and uh, you see her just pop out of space. And then you see her reappear on the other side of this creature, blocking the doorway. That's gonna be 21 to hit. And you kill the- Yeah! Oh! The adventure continues. Now. podcast it's the first episode of march march 2024 what do you think of what do you think of old march uh julius caesar the ides of march the ides of march did you read that play in uh high school i did not oh like shakespeare you mean yeah, that's yeah that i guess i did quote comes from. yeah i did I did read, but I don't remember anything about it. No. But I, 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 Spoilers. I do remember having to read it in high Caesar school. dies. Oh, come on. Come on, <laughs> dude. You got to warn people with a tag, but John. They name a salad after him in the epilogue. That's right. That's accurate. That's, That's exactly right. what happened. It's true legacy. Period accurate. That was, I did the, my classical monologue was from, one of the ones that I did was from that show. Do you remember any of it? It was Anthony's speech. It says, uh, really go full yeah. out. Can we get a spotlight? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I come to I come to uh, I come to honor I come Barry to bury Caesar. Caesar, not to praise him. The good that men do lives after them. Uh, the evil that men do lives after them. The good is often tarried with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. You all did see that here upon the Lupercal, I did thrice present him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet. Some, I don't know, something. Hey, that was pretty good. Yeah. That, that was, was really good. good. Lettuce, yeah, yeah. egg yolk, Worcestershire sauce. What was, what was your, what was <laughs> your, these are some of the ingredients. What was your classical model? I was going to say, was that your classical, bro? That was the classical, yeah. I had a couple. I had a comedic and a dramatic. Oh. I think I did God Stand Up for Bastards was my, Okay. I, that was my dramatic for a while. And then my comedic was the, uh, uh, from Midsummer Night's Dream, the Player King. Not the Player King, that's Hamlet. The, uh. Hecuba? No, the when uh, no, he's doing the uh, he's introducing everyone. Oh, Porkins, oh. Porkins. I can't fucking wait. Think of the it. Hamlet speech? No, no. In in Midsummer Night's Dream, when the uh, the guy is telling, he he's basically introducing the play, and he tells the entire plot of the play. Oh yeah, oh. Primus and Thisbe. Yeah, Primus and Thisbe. That was my thing, and I would act the whole thing. It was really fun. I did uh, King John. 
King John. Yeah. Do fairly, Hubert, for so foul effect. Must you with hot irons burn out both my eyes? Oh. Wow. wow. Instantly dramatic. I think he just got the part. When to, <laughs> when to the sessions of sweet silent thought, I summon up a remembrance of things past. I sigh a lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woe, new wail my dear time's waste. Then can I grieve at grievances foregone. I forget the rest. Oh, that's uh, Dexter. <laughs> Dexter. <laughs> that's lost. Oh. That's where I'm lost. I'm lost. Yeah. I was watching them both at the same time. <laughs> what do you think of when you think of March, Sydney? My birthday. Your birthday's in March? Yeah. Son of a gun. Get out of here. Yeah. A big 2-0. <laughs> <laughs> this year, try the big 3 0. Oh, Ooh. wow. Right. This is the year? Oh. Oh. What date so I can be busy? I'll dox myself in case anybody wants to send me a gift or whatever. Wow. Um, it's, it's a fun date. It's March 30th, and I turn 30. Oh, uh, 30 for 30. 30 for 30. 30 for 30. Start city. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's right. Is it in your calendar? It's it a calendar. big birthday yeah. guy. Yes. I, every time I hear like someone, this is my birthday, I always put it in my calendar. So. It's a great, you're the best friend in the world, though, because then you know everybody, you actually know everybody's birthday. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kate, what do you think of when you think of March? My, say my birthday, because now you have no, to say my birthday. You, she knows that, birthday. It's a birthday, mm. but it's not yours. It's Taylor Hansen's birthday is March 14th. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, you Are don't. Are you talking about the Hansen brother, Taylor yep. Hansen? <laughs> you know he's a bad guys. dude, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's a real bad dude. So, That's what you think. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> obviously now, they're not cool, but you know, when I was growing up, I was definitely a Hansen wow. girl. and. Goyle. Really liked Taylor. So what would you do on his birthday? Just like light candles around you and summon him? <laughs> summon him. Yeah, kind of. I'd be like, ooh, I love you so much. Just putting silver dust on the ground and mm -hmm. circles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come to me. So Taylor many relationships it. in this life. Taylor. Maybe he'll One come to you last. on your birthday on August 28th. Oh, no. Oh, look at this guy. It's August 29th. Damn, oh, he's 29th. good. <gasps> okay. Michael Jackson's oh, I'll birthday. Fix my, which also. is, and my sister's birthday. You know why you thought that? Because it's a leap year. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the thing. Everyone God, in this room has a, go cross everyone in this Stop. room has a half birthday. I don't get one because there's never a February 29th. Oh, so, well, there is. Well, there is this, oh. there is this year. There is, Wait. There is, every four years, there is a February. Yeah, so you. She's still on the Julian calendar. You just had your half birthday. Oh, my God. And you missed it. <laughs> Kate doesn't do daylight savings time, and she's not using the Gregorian calendar. You also have to divide 29 by half. I really want to just mess up Joe's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so on the February 13.5 <laughs> no, uh, Matthew, March Does that evoke anything for you? My sister's birthday is in March That's the, the number one thing you think of when you think of March? Like shit, gotta get her a card or a gift? Her birthday's March 1st oh. ah. So it is Ooh. the number one March up. thing So what do you think of on like March 2nd on? Uh, it was uh, it be In Like growing up, it was always like <laughs> It was about time for a vacation Like I was Because yeah. like, it was like we'd been it was the brutality of winter and no breaks except for President's Day. And you're just like, oh, well, March is a slog. And then you finally get to spring break. In college, it's March. But in, yeah. in, high, in high school, elementary school, it was like April was usually the spring break, right? I don't, did we get a spring <sighs> break? Yeah. In high school? Uh -huh. We do? Huh. I, I don't think we had a spring break. You didn't have a spring break? No, not, I, I don't think so. Did you have a, I'm sorry, a spring recess. Yeah, I don't remember. Oh, uh, maybe. But it was always a. It was just Easter break, basically. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It was uh, just a couple days. It was never like a full week. I don't think. I feel like Catholic school. We had like you know Monday, Thursday, straight into Good Friday, like the whole good long Easter break. But then we'd also get a week off. Midwinter really? break. Midwinter break. Mm -hmm. Midwinter, yes. Yeah. Now in New York, uh, kids have a week off in February and a week off in April. Yes. But they fucking go to school to like July. Some yeah. stupid. Yeah. Like that. Same thing in Jersey. It drives me insane. So it drives dumb. me insane. When did you, Wait, when you, you want to hear something ridiculous? Yeah, yes. I do. This really pissed me off. Oh my God. So last year there were no snow days because there was just no snow in, in the Northeast. And they decided that they needed to trickle like these days off in. And on Memorial Day weekend, they decided that they would burn one of these snow days so that the kids just had off. And instead of doing that on the Friday 
of Memorial Day weekend. They did it on Tuesday. What? The day after Memorial Day. <laughs> when everybody has to go back to work and now you got to deal with oh. kids at home. And we were just like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? Like, what are, what are you thinking? You know what else they do now? Um, uh, snow days, they don't get the day off anymore. It's now just a remote learning day. Yeah. Oh my God, people were- oh. Which is and then, garbage. Oh. And then they weren't set up for it in the city. Do you hear about this? No, they, I didn't know about that. They were not equipped. Like they, they didn't have the infrastructure in place. So no one could log on. Ugh. Everyone was oh, so yeah. angry. Oh, gross. Oh, I'm sure all those kids were furious. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, so, some teachers were eventually like, fuck it, just go enjoy the snow. Yeah, just go, go sledding, for God's sakes. Ugh, gross, less school. Skid. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Defund of? the schools, am I right? <laughs> yeah. I wasn't even going to talk about that. <laughs> Eliminate the Department of Education. <laughs> uh, March. What is March? I One think thing. I well, two things. I think I know. March Madness. Yeah, yep, obviously. Yeah, there you go. And spring training. Yep, that was and it. spring training. Yeah, Pitches and catches. Pitches and catches February, but uh, yeah. March. Yeah. Makes you think. Like, it really, it's like spring is right on the horizon once you hear March. Yeah. I've always, every year, I threaten to go down to Florida for Mets spring training. I've never, I've always wanted to do it. I've never Let's done. go. Same. Same. You really should. That's a good bucket list yeah. item. I've my, always wanted to go to. to my mom and my sister used to go every year. Do you want to go? I would love to go. Where is it? Uh, it's not near Fort Lucy. Yeah. Uh, I have to go to Fort Myers. Yeah, it's on. That's the thing that sucks is like they're opposite coasts. Because mm -hmm. we could all oh, go and just we could go all go in stadiums. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they play each other though. Yeah. I feel like ours are close. Like, we're in Clearwater, so I feel like is that close. I think that's it's close, close to Fort Myers. I think it's on that end. Yeah, I think you're. That's, and of course, North Foundry's headquarters is like in uh, Naples or something. Uh, right, Naples, right near uh, Fort Myers. Oh, Naples. Man. We could roll some dice, <laughs> watch some baseball, crash at their house. <laughs> <And you know. laughs> we wouldn't have to pay for a hotel. <laughs> right, Norris Foundry? Right. Paying dice. Hey. Sex. Yeah, our sponsor. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I, I always want to go because you forget that though March is the start of spring, they do spring training in Florida because it is still winter here yeah. <laughs> for all of March. That's yeah, I used the, to go to like freezing and raining all the time. That's in March. the appeal is to like go down and get some early spring. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, we, my brother and I would always go to like uh, the first Red Sox game at Fenway. If it was opening day, we'd like maybe wait till day two. And you know, first week of April in Boston, it's freezing. Oh, yeah. freezing. It's so cold. Yeah. It's freezing. <laughs> it's so it's cold. terrible weather for baseball. I love those April it's not games. Awful weather for some I know. Other they're they're terrible weather. Like that, nobody's there. You know, <laughs> it's the really sneaky ones are the September games. I, I, I was. At work one year, there everyone was going to a Detroit Yankees game, and I was like, "Oh, I'll watch the Tigers!" Like, so I I went, and it was September, and it was you know we were wearing shorts, yeah. And then you get there, and you know the temperature drops around nine p.m. So yeah. everyone's you were all excited for the game, and then about you know an hour and a half in, it's suddenly freezing. <laughs> and everyone's like, "Can't move." <laughs> well, it'll be warm before you know it. Winter will be over. What I think of when I think of March is we are one month closer to November first. Oh. <laughs> that's what I think of with every As you were month. saying that, month. I was like, I know what he's <laughs> That's what I think of one month closer to celebrating Christmas. Yep. I thought you were going to say closer to December 1st, but you're, I guess you, I forgot. No, no, no. Starts start. to celebrate. I forgot. I and forgot. then he ends it the day before like yep. a psychopath. <sighs> no, I, I celebrate Christmas Day. It's just not the same. Yeah. <laughs> celebrate Christmas morning. <laughs> By noon, morning. he starts ripping things <laughs> off the wall <laughs> and it's drunk and oh, rage. Right. <laughs> drinking. <laughs> He's wasted at noon. <laughs> <laughs> Your children like, just in be like full morning. <laughs> Daddy, oh. There he goes. <laughs> gonna have such, this kid's gonna have such a complicated what are you about? <laughs> relationship with Christmas because they're gonna like get all this enthusiasm leading up to it, and then like all this tragedy when it actually comes. I have such a complicated relationship with anything Troy likes <laughs> because because when you're in the flush of it and it's not and you don't have to live with him, it's great. Yeah. You're riding you're around away. him. Yeah. It's just and then all the fiery it's intensity that. of like that yeah. just consumes it. And he's always there. Because <laughs> yeah. he's like upstate. Can't. He can't come down here and like hang out in other places anymore. He's always at the house. Know, always yeah. at the house. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we if, like going out to drink with Troy, it is I I'll say like we have our issues, but it's wonderful for the first like drink or two. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> and then he just like goes tunnel vision on his phone, <laughs> oh, swaying no. at the bar, issuing nasty comments, <laughs> saying things to the TV. I don't the TV. swear. I do make nasty comments. He just, he just gambles. <laughs> okay, he's just like gambling. <laughs> gambling. Depends he's, on the state where I mean, seriously. <laughs> depends on the seriously, state. Seriously, we're in Indiana at Gen Con. We're <laughs> sitting there and he's just like, 
What's on? Was, that <laughs> college women's volleyball? He didn't even say And it's just anything. like, they got it. They got it. No, for, no, for a minute, he didn't even say anything. We're all, like, we had a big group. We're all sitting around having a good time laughing. He's on his phone. Like, he's on his phone being antisocial. And eventually, we're like, what are you doing? He's How's like, Berkeley College exactly. of Music score <laughs> this year? <laughs> How's their front five? How's their field hockey team looking this year? But it is fun to come out with them. When, and that's because he really likes going out right now. That's great. Yeah. 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 I don't get to go out that often anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a lot of children. Special treat. Yeah. Special Coming treat. here, though, not so great. Not so great. No. <laughs> so, yeah. Wait, what happens, Troy? What is your version of what happens every time we break for lunch? Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> we Shots all fired. go outside mm -hmm. and you guys go one way and I go another way. Every, no matter what way time. we go. <laughs> <laughs> I wait to see where you guys go. And then I go someplace else. <laughs> Troy asks us all like, what are you going to get? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? And then we're like, what are you thinking? He just walks in a different direction than what we <laughs> He's said. Like, I'm thinking something different. Something else. That's his commitment to this sort of dramatically adversarial relationship that we have for the show. Yeah. It's just like in... Uh, Saving Private Ryan, where it's like they sent all the actors to boot camp except for Matt Damon. Mm, they yeah. feel like an outsider in, yeah. when they're filming it. That's what he's doing. Yeah. You I'm know? Matt Damon. You're, so you're very <laughs> you're yeah. method. You remind and me of Matt. Where That's was Matt I Damon heard. from? Boston. 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 But he loves Christmas too. I probably Yeah, but you know what? We don't we don't have to just single out Troy because producer Francis as well is I've is, never seen him eat. He just he eats alone in there when you never go and you're like, hey, you want to talk? He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is me time. I don't know, but for some I'll reason have to it's listen more to normal. You in a microphone in my ear. I don't want to do it at my for lunch break. Time, for Thanks. some reason it's more normal. <laughs> it's, yeah, Francis does it in a normal way. Troy does right. it in a combative way. Yeah. I just I want to eat the <laughs> same place you guys order from because I, it's too many yeah, people. So we come there. back here and eventually we all eat together. You just won't. But I'm all done. I'm already done eating. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, he's too weird. On, just on waiting. I'm like, you guys ready? Did you eat all your apps? <laughs> you eat all your apps. I like to eat alone. <laughs> Some people like to be alone. There's nothing wrong with that. Eat Kate. alone. I like to drink alone. <laughs> oh, shit. Also, uh, March 25th, anniversary of the destruction of the One Ring. Oh. That's right. Something else to celebrate. I do remember that. Do they use the same calendar? Uh, they do. Like, it's it's sort of, because, like, part of the conceit of the book is that it's translated into English. It is, like, an original work mm. written in different languages. Uh, the like Red, Red Book of West March translated into it. So, they translate the dates ah. into a calendar that we would recognize. So, it's, it's March 25th, yeah. So, it's accurate. Wow. Yeah. Well... That's March for you. <laughs> that about sums her up. That's, That's it. March. That's all about there is. sums her up. But as as usual, it always comes back to how weird I am. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around after the break. Maybe I'll be here. Maybe I won't. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll walk the other way. <laughs> We're back. I want to give a big shout out to our sponsors, of course, Foundry, VTT, Norse Foundry, and Demiplane. And Demiplane produces these amazing character sheets where you can remove weapon runes you shouldn't have had in the first place. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Which is what Sydney the, did in between last week's episode. Did, episode. Did With I? the click of a button, you can remove cheating runes from your weapon. What made you? What made you think you could have such a thing? <laughs> I just think that my character, my creatively made character, uh -huh. had this cool weapon. Right. And it's just maybe part of their backstory. I don't know. I guess you have to figure it out. She would have one. She had one. Mm -hmm. And when I sent my character sheet to our beloved GM, who most certainly looked it over. Never seen it. Also was never sent to me. 
<laughs> it's very possible it was never sent to you. Guaranteed she does draft time. emails and she doesn't That's, send them. That just happened was, last time. I think so. I would put it at 50 50 odds. 50 50. That, that Sydney sent it and you never looked at it and that Sydney didn't. Send it. I'd also like to put money on 50 50 odds. I'm um, 100% sure it was never sent. Regardless. <laughs> so she emailed right now. Regard, I want to know the answer. Regardless. Okay. There is. Joe and I were talking and, you know, it's cool. Like, yes, she could have this weapon. It's a plus one, like, to hit. It's really not that crazy of a bonus that I added. There are much higher. Higher potency runes, you know. I'm just saying. Yeah. I Wait, is your argument? At least I didn't give myself a greater striking rune. I could have given I mean, myself a gun. It was right there on Debbie. I could have given myself a gun. She's like gaslighting us right now. You know? with a gun. You should, to it. you should thank me. It's weird. My katana is also a gun. I did you as a fever. But hang on. Uh, I was just going to say I was wrong. Uh, and I checked my email by the way. No email. Mm, I'll check my email. Okay. Uh, but Joe mentioned drafts. Joe mentioned a good point that within you know the the game of Pathfinder Two E and the way that you level up and stuff, you wouldn't necessarily be able to get this until level three. You can get a striking, I think, at level four. It's just typically, it's not that you can. The rules don't prevent you, but that's just generally the how way it that it would be. The way it flows in a pre-written AP. Right. right. So I don't want to disrupt the pre-written AP. I just think that. It's a. It was a cool thing that maybe my character had from her her past or whatever. Dude, if you want to put a flavor rune on your weapon, rune it up. She'll get a flavor rune. Her weapon looks really cool. <laughs> maybe it's a rune that has like no lost effect. its power temporarily. Oh, I love exactly. It. I love now it. something cool might happen that reignites. Exactly. Power. That's cool. what the starting wealth is supposed to represent, right? Sure. Like, yeah. It's like your assets, not just the gold you have on hand. Yeah, like yeah You yeah. could have inherited a or, or found a really cool weapon. Right, which is like what you can do when you start, you know, uh, w sometimes you start with a fifth level character, you know? Yeah. And it's not that this character went to a store and bought these things. It, that gold number just kind of represents, like, here's what they came in with from yeah. either their adventures or was passed down to them or whatever. Totally. But when you're doing it from first level, you kind of have to pass down... <laughs> flavor shit and heirlooms as opposed to actual I think that's the difference too weapons of, yeah. of we're starting from first level yeah and that's that's the difference here's the drawback yes. I think you've You've had this character now for 10 episodes, so for the next 10 episodes, you'll have a minus one to all of your attacks to even out the plus one that you got for the past 10 episodes. So um, can we just <laughs> start- her face. <laughs> like, can the trying to producer not start uh, tracking that? <laughs> Hang on. Episode in, 25 to 34. In Cindy's defense. <laughs> Minus in, one alt. In Cindy's defense, what we learned last week is that though she gave it to herself, she apparently didn't apply the oh, apply yeah. it on her character yeah. sheet. Yeah. <laughs> so she cheated without the mechanical effects. She cheated and then I mean, uncheated immediately. I will <laughs> say. A real, a real mess. I will say. <laughs> 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 real mess. I'm going to cry. I crack myself up so often. But no, I think I think uh, <laughs> the truth is, as mad as, as anybody gets about like my math, and there, I'm sure there are listeners that's like, she's not doing this right. I nerf myself more than I help myself. Oh, and yeah. I just 100%. want everyone <laughs> That's for sure. I will agree that. with that. That's I will sure. agree with that. And yet, I do some pretty sick hits and tricks. Yeah. So yeah. I will take it off. It's no longer on my character sheet. I love the flavor it's of- there. Uh, it's an old rune in this katana, yeah. this red rune uh, carved in. That's yeah, something to think about. Yeah. It's like- why is it dormant or yeah. broken? And like, what do you have to do like thematically to kind of restore it? So much more interesting. Did you oh, find okay. this katana? Maybe it belonged to a once great warrior? Did you steal it? Did I you can't steal from it? another this family? Is part, this is, I think this is probably something and then already and Like killed a child and then ran away. It's cool though. Like why can't I activate the rune? Is it not my katana? Was it not my? Are you not yeah. wise enough yet? Can it only be yet? activated Am I by... not smart enough yet? Yeah. <laughs> well, what? Care like level wise, like no, exactly. Better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can it only be activated if you're found worthy? Oh, Ooh. see, this writes itself. <sighs> I'm doing Troy's job. When you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Okay. Yeah. What do you do all day? <laughs> <laughs> some money. <She's> here. <laughs> when you come up with a backstory scene, you should make it I'm, about this. I'm gonna email you In this time for real. Okay. <laughs> Check my email every two and a half minutes. <laughs> this time I'll actually email you. <laughs> we were talking about Sydney and her emailing and the drafting, and I literally, this updated version of her character sheet, I sent her previously, and she was like, I don't have that updated version. I was like, I, I, I sent it to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, let me let me see. And I give her the date in the email. It's like two, almost two months ago when I sent it to her. And uh, she's like, oh, yeah. 
I have a draft email that says thank you <laughs> and was never sent. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. What were you waiting That's for? Amazing. Thank what you. Is what is that? I'm a Joe. Like, I don't remember his name. Like, I'm going to hold off in case <laughs> I think of something else. I want to see if this feeling of gratitude sticks. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little too caught up in my emotions right now. We put this in a drawer. I don't want to send this yet. I don't want to jump to conclusions. I'll send it later. I, like, Maybe. right now, I feel like thankful, but am yeah. I thankful? Yeah. Right. <laughs> It's always told me not to be too quick to thank. <laughs> I opened it back up. I deleted the exclamation is. point. I was like, that was too much. I don't want to sound glad. too eager. I didn't send that. It's a thing with millennials. Oof. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, you young kids. If I didn't tell you, thank you. <sighs> Got it. Getting back to the story. Anyways. Please. <sighs> made up backstory. Uh, the, the episode last week featured you examining actually a lot of the episode was you talking about this gallery of uh images moving images that you saw um trying to interpret what you've learned well, so far motion pictures I motion, motion pictures. pictures you might want to call them motion pictures uh what you try to interpret what you saw how it connected what you've learned thus far in the adventure and then also trying to figure out what you still don't know you then walked into another room which seemed to be the studio of the artist that was creating these paintings and one painting was left unfinished the next masterpiece that showed Kanipo, you assume, sitting on a leaf throne with all these dead elves writhing at its feet. But just like the other moving paintings, this one, even though still in sketch form, was moving as well, and the elves were now joined by humans and dwarves and gnomes and all manner of creatures. Kanipo's enemies are no longer the elves, it seems. It's, there's so much more. But then Kanipo themself was fading out of view and someone new taking the throne. You walked into the next room and it was a library, two levels, ladders on wheels that could reach the higher levels, books and scrolls packing into every single shelf that was made out of the trunk of the tree itself. You walked in and this insect creature jumped out with a multicolored carapace of runes that seemed to give off a bioluminescent glow. It dazzled some of you as those runes exploded outwards in a dazzling display of color and then immediately took Talitha out with a vicious double claw crit. But you were able to finish her off. She now lies dead on the floor. In her final moments, did she let loose a telepathic burst that let us know her name? That's all that happened. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. <laughs> She's seven feet tall, and that's all that came out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the death rattle. Is there like... Uh, giant insect. Is there like any... Uh, knowledge, because like I want to know why this thing was in this room, because there's nothing in the other room. There was nothing in the gallery. Um, we, we know that they're the uh, how do you pronounce what they're called? Oh, the the Jerry, the Zuriac, the Zuriac, Zuriac, yeah, Zuriac. It's like the apostrophe. So they're they're Zyriac. local to the plane of shadows. So they they would live here. Maybe it just lives in the library. Huh. Um, huh. Why don't we? Maybe there'll be a journal of some kind, or a rec, or a or maybe maybe the library have library cards, like old school, with the names of people who signed it. Everyone who checked uh, out each book. I do yeah. want to check the body though before we start digging All through right. the books. Yeah, yeah. A lot of All right. Here. While you're checking the body, let me um, treat wounds on you, Talitha. Yeah, let's get rid of this wounded condition. Yeah, exactly. Wound. Okay, do you, you did battle medicine. I mean, do you have to wait? Oh no, that acts like treat wounds, right? Yeah, but it does not get rid of the wounded condition. And you, I'm assuming you're still down. It's only like point. two or three hit points. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Then I'll do a, a regular uh, medicine check. And I got it. So, uh, yeah, you should be good with that. Oh, my God. Max? Min. Two points. Is that all you needed? Of healing. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm down three. <laughs> so I don't, I don't get the, I don't, I don't lose. You still wound. have the wound. Oh <laughs> no, no, you lose wounded as soon as I treat wounds. Oh, treat wounds. Oh, right. treat oh, wounds, yeah, not yeah, magic. Yeah. So uh, you're just down one hit point now. Yeah, that's fine. I'll leave it at that. Roy, that is a twenty perception. Asta, looking at the body. At the body, you look at the body. You don't see any weapons, any type of armor. Its natural shell was uh, giving it its protection. You were able to find a way in with your sentient blade. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> but. Uh, 
Yeah, no, nothing on its person. However, the room seems to be brimming with books yeah. and notes. And- yeah. uh, so can we, I mean, I feel like we should just kind of sit down and search this library. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So do we, can we? Take 20. Or the Ramius, but like twitching. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Make sure there's no one at the doors. Make sure. Yeah, let's, let's make sure, make sure no, no one will surprise us. Because there are three different exits out of this room. We, we assume one goes back to the original uh, area we came in from, but two doors to the east. Oh. That we have no idea what's on the other side of, so we should probably, I don't know, at least be prepared. We don't have to open them or anything, but be prepared uh, for something to come in. But yeah. I'm going to go down to the southeast door and just quietly listen and just check it to see if there's any uh, commotion on the other side. Um, we already know this creature was lying in wait for us, so it's, it's a little tough. Uh, 25, perception. We listen to that southeast door. There's a northeast door, a southeast door, and then a south door and of course the west door that you came in you listen in there you don't hear anything however uh what's your roll 25 25 you can tell that it's a larger room Mm. cavernous space in there i don't hear anything let's try to keep our voices low and let's look at these books it is a library exactly there's a sign that says everyone shh um (laughs) (laughs) so let's take our time and Perception checks to go, go through yeah. the library. Yeah. Brother Ramius, yeah. I want to go up to the north for what it matters. I just think it's so cool. And like climb that ladder and start up there and just start looking through these books. He is convinced that there is information in here that will fill in so many gaps from the paintings mm-hmm. that we were sort of uh, guessing at. Maybe we can get some, some hard answers here. I mean, is it safe to say that we would take like a couple hours in here? I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah. why not? We'll right. take a couple hours. Take some time to really dig into this library. Yeah. yeah. Zephyr will definitely also climb around too, just for fun. Yeah. yeah. I'll go. I'll check out the, the the stacks to the east, up top there. Buggles will concentrate on the lowest shelves, oh. and Aww. he's specifically looking for anything with pictures. <laughs> Let me get some either arcana or occultism checks. Let's see. As you examine these, because I would imagine for some of you, you can't make heads or tails of the significance of these books other than like uh, sort of a cursory understanding while others among you, depending on the outcome of your role, may see what's important here. 17 for Buggles and Arcana. Okay. 18 on Arcana. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a when you did the Nor- <laughs> when you did the Norse Foundry. This is our sponsor. We're holding up our dice. Sydney and I did a flavor roll, natural one, and then whatever, let it roll off my shoulder right. because we're not Just actually flavor. playing flavor yet. Roll, bro. Rolling now, natural one. <laughs> oh my god! Different dice. You accidentally and hit so a candle. So Norse been ice cold last for a month. episode. <laughs> last episode, you rolled. Multiple I don't know ones. which Woodstock which I pissed off. I don't. But can you lay off with the hexes on me, please? I'm going to say with that natural one, you knock over a candle and light up every book. <laughs> no! <laughs> Zephyr! Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Brother, sorry. It's Alexandria all over again. <laughs> I'll stomp it out. I'll stomp it out. And all the second doors, Alexandria. All the doors locked from the outside. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. 19, 20 if it's related to Kanipo. Or uh, I'm my, other, my other pursuer lead is going to be Count Renault. <sighs> okay. Okay. And I'm also going to use, I can, I'm going to clue Brother Ramius in. So you, if you're all, you get a plus one. You don't want to give it to him. So. Cool. You know she's been struggling. I need a lot of help. I, need, I don't know I what I'm doing help. in here. <laughs> bring that one up to a two. I'm not that good at I'll just do pull ups while I wait. It's impressive. One of the ladder rooms. One of the ladders. <laughs> One hand. <laughs> or two ladders, like parallel. She's like oh, yeah. practicing whoa, whoa. the jump like the, off like the parallel, that she like the failed yeah, before. Parallel, like parallel rings. Yeah. Just over and over parkouring. <laughs> 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 what uh, what did you roll there, Brother uh, Brother Ramius got a 17 in occultism. 18. With, uh, 18 if it's related to Kinepo. 17 or with off. that bonus. Oh. Okay. oh. Yep. Um, can I roll a separate occultism check? Or is it all, is it just, we could roll either skill to research the same set of topics. Yeah, either skill. I used to roll your favorite. It's going to give you the same information. So you're taking some time here trying to see if there's a thematic sort of unity to these books or if it's just uh, the uh, collected works of George R. R. Martin. Right. Just fantasy novels. Um, <laughs> it's like, like a, what are they looking around? It's like, 
It's like an airplane bookstore. <laughs> what, the- what, are, what are fantasy novels in the plane of shadows? Are they just like drawing room comedies? <laughs> right, yeah, they're, naturalists. They're all about things that happen in the material plane that are mundane. <laughs> <laughs> there are books on accounting. <laughs> you feel as if the majority of the books tend to revolve around magical diseases, um, elven medical texts, Mm. um, codices on evil rituals and curses, and more of the same like that. So it seems like research was being done. Um, You immediately start thinking of the Abnabulid curse. Something was going on here to create the curse, to combat the curse, to enhance the curse. It's unclear. You imagine that this entire collection would be worth a great deal, but it's difficult to tell which of the writings are valuable and which aren't. Uh, a lot of them are in very poor condition as well. Um, but as you're looking, you can't imagine that your uh, focus is on how to fetch a great price for these things. It's to try and you know, figure out what the mystery is here. With enough of those successful checks, I'll say that like um, three, three books in particular really jump out at you there is a uh, ancient osirian scroll Ooh. um concerning magical blights um a rare unburned copy of curses foul and fell that's bound in uh, eel hide and a beautifully illuminated copy of the physicer's guide to elves hmm. um you're just saying they jump out because they're like they look really nice. They look really nice. Like you could probably sell them. All right, I'll uh, take them. So rather take, than grab everything, I take them. Well, I'll take. Them. Asta oh. takes them. Asta <laughs> takes all of them. Asta, hmm? what are you doing? I thought I would hold on to these. Brother Amius has a them. has a magical bag that can hold his books for him. Yes. Yeah. Well, perhaps I'll you hold need on. To stay light on your feet. I could hold on to the Fisker's Guide to Elves, probably. Why? Well, what if you? <clears throat> Why? Why do you need it? What if you fall? What if you drop the books? Shouldn't we keep some? He's got a magical bag that holds his Like a magical backpack. <clears throat> Fine. Take it. Thank you, Asta. I roll a perception on yeah. the Yeah. <laughs> what the ass. fuck is just happening? <laughs> Absolute intruder. Elf killer. <laughs> yep. Like Natural clear. 20. Oh, Thank you. Oh, see the detective. Natural 19, No dude. shit, Sherlock. 27. You no, know she must die. <laughs> I'll tell roll you. Roll for initiative. I'll, I'll tell you. Shit. <laughs> I'll tell you something. Are you trying? A couple things are going to happen. Asta... You've noticed that Asta constantly is looking for glitz and gold and anything of value. Mm. With the teeth, you know, she took like the gold fillings and stuff. She's just money hungry. Money she, hungry. She is always looking for the most valuable items in the room. Klepto has no compunction to, about stealing. Maybe. Could she steal an ancient, powerful katana? <laughs> Maybe. From an innocent person. Perhaps. While they're still alive. You, who rolled the 20? I did. Talitha knows that. <laughs> oh. well, you are the GM. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? And I'll hand, it, I'll hand it back yes. over to Troy. Back, back to you, Troy. Back to you, Troy. <laughs> Thanks, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. Stay warm out there. Uh, I can't Asta, remember what you guys... These books are far more valuable than the price they would fetch on the street. There is knowledge in here that... Buyers would not understand. It's important that we understand what's happening here. Of course. I just... Sorry, just... I get nervous when it comes to... The... You have to understand, there were people within my order that went to great lengths to profit off of the... Stealing, selling, the profiteering of knowledge. It is part of the reason that my sect was created. To combat these corruptions that would occur among the powerful and the elite followers of the Keeper. So I'm, I'm sorry, it's not about you. It's more about what I've seen and how money can corrupt otherwise well-meaning people. No, you were right. It, it was about me. I was being selfish. Of course. We need all this information. It, do you, do you like to read? Um... Sometimes. 
and I, I find a book that I that looks that I think it looks like Asta would enjoy. It's the Kama Sutra. And I hand it to her. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is a book with pictures. It does have yeah, a, lot it's a lot of pictures. It's a pictures. very graphic version. Of the <laughs> yeah. That's like the elf the version elven. of the Kama yeah. Sutra. <laughs> Asta opens it. Oh, my. Oh, Buggles. But, but you should understand not be looking the at the significance of the pictures Buggles, at all. Buggles, did you look? Did you find this book? Yeah, it's not so pretty pictures. I thought maybe you'd enjoy it. I don't really understand what's going on. Um, it is. Darling, I'm going to hold on to this. Oh, good. Thank you, Buggles. And one for me. And then I guess oh. one for himself. Not, not a, of that, but he finds uh-huh. another, like, uh, <laughs> picture book. A picture-laden <laughs> book for, for himself to peruse. It's adorable. It's, uh, it's just like a fairy tale book. Great. About a little girl that gets lost in the forest. He takes it, and he's just like, puts it under his cloak. Asta holds on to the Karma Sutra book. Tucks that into the robe. Shadow Karma Sutra. Um, does the Desiriac have any kind of evidence of painting on her? Does she have paint on her hand? As you uh, That's study... That's thinking like a detective. You study my magnifying body. glass. Take your magnifying glass. Remove it from the door and start studying <laughs> the body. You do see uh, paint underneath her fingernails. In reading different things in the room, you get the sense... <laughs> oh, okay. Still alive. That was the noise she made. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, we all we all stab her. <laughs> Sides of life. It seems like she was hired uh, to be an official court historian for Kanipo, uh, and she went simply by uh, the name the Chronicler. The Chronicle. Oh, that's so cool. Just like that's looking cool. through all these papers and you see correspondence between her and Kanipo and it's always signed the Chronicler. Hmm. Um, so were the, everything she depicted in the paintings were, was stuff that has happened? Um, yes, she was basically commissioned to do that. So that final painting. But hasn't happened. It's not done. It might be done. That's... I'm with, if Kanipo is already, it, it could be done. Yeah, could be done. Could be done. Man, and there's nothing in this library of her chronicles of Kanipo. There's nothing of her writing of what, like what happened, like his she did memoirs. It, she did it in the painting. So only through the painting, not through writing. Yeah, you, you get there. They're like some. So she notes. paints paintings that move. What else do you want? <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> Uh, you get. Right, I'm, just I'm just kind of give you a, an idea from her because she didn't really have a journal per se, but there are notes that lead you to believe that like she um, wasn't super thrilled with her work. I think it seemed like she was promised more, and it wasn't quite living up to the hype. Um, but she was content enough. Um, mm. And then we killed her. And then you killed her. Um, However, you do find, because uh, if you're going to spend enough time there, you do find one other book that seems to be of importance, and that is a spell book. Oh. oh. Nice. As you open it up, there are, um, on one page, three crushed pieces of a mirror next to a spell, and then two other spells. Crushed mirror, is that invisibility? Mirror, or image. Mirror, mirror image. image. Or mirror image. How do you identify? Is it just Arcana? Is that how we? Yeah, can we Arcana? Religion, if it's. I'll roll an Arcana. Identify, identify magic. magic. Natural three. Uh, I'll roll 13. Arcana. I mean, it just needs to be in, in one of the spells traditions. Nineteen. Nineteen. What'd you get there, Austin? Thirteen. Thirteen. Almost a nat twenty. Brother Ramius, the Arcana. Um. Actually, no. Um. And it doesn't matter anyway. I rolled a natural four. And he's not trained in Arcana. So, yeah, that's mirror image. Ah, um, cool. And then the other two spells you're not 100% sure of. Um, did any of you learn? Do, do you learn like a wizard, like through a spell book? Yeah. That's should, right? Fucking yep. sweet. And I get mirror image is one of the spells that I can get later through my study. I think you just got it. You just, you just got, got it. it. Yes. Done. Got it. It's the best part of Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, scrolls. Learn. Yeah, man. Yeah, and we, buying like, scrolls. Wait, do I learn it then? Do I actually learn it? It's we, a process. It's okay. A process. But yeah, you now you don't have to wait. seek it out, level up, or like wait to level up. Spend a spell. Yeah, this is this is how 
wizards win. Yes, yeah, <laughs> for sure. It's like one of the only things that wizards are clearly better at than if sorcerers or who else am I thinking of? Or clerics, you know, uh, like. But if you find it, if you sprinkle it you in. You can just buy it, find it, you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, you can just, yeah. You start, you get to a point as you level up, you can start just amassing the ability to cast anything. It's yeah. just what you prepare each day. Oh, that yeah. is so cool. Yeah, yeah. Spellbook is like the best thing you can find. Uh, so this has three spells. One, uh, Buggles feels pretty confident his mirror image and the other two you're not sure. And Brother Amius is like, but we will settle this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll slide it away. <laughs> one moment. Um, no, that's awesome. Take that and then we'll we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll, we can figure that out. Yeah, learning that. that's gonna get, I, I bet that gets crunchy. I assume I did it's it, downtime. I did it with Atticus. Yeah, it's, it's like, a, it takes a while. Okay. Hours at okay. least, I think. In the game, not in real life. Correct. Well, Possib- it's going to take us hours. Possibly to figure it again, out. But yeah. yeah. So you're no longer wounded there, Talitha. No. Nope. Right. Um, could I listen at the northern door? Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody else is injured at all, right? We're ready to move on? Yep. Okay. The Jordan is kind of a, uh, a testament to uh, your gameplay that you haven't had to rest yet. There been multiple encounters. Yeah. I'd love to rest, but we won't. <laughs> well, let's see what this room is. Yeah, I mean, this seems place. like a particularly horrible place to rest, unless we absolutely it's, had to. No, for sure. Uh, 25 on the perception. 25 on the perception. Every single room, eerily silent. This room was silent because Zephyr alerted the Desiriac to your presence. Perhaps in that fight, you've alerted other people to your presence. But also he's silent no. because she's dead. That now it's silent because she's dead. Also, the Xeriac just didn't speak. It's true. Uh, the Chronicler. All right, I'll open the, the Chronicler. Door. You open the northern door. Oh. oh. Whoa. Yes. What? Whoa, what do you see? Whoa. Bedroom. It bed. looks... I just see a bed. <laughs> oh, I was just saying. It looks like a noble's bedroom. Yeah, fancy schmance. There are yards of pastel fabric hanging on an elegant, um, however, very, very dusty four-poster bed. Um, Same fabric laying on a nearby vanity, also covered with a thick layer of dust. There's a large painting on the wall uh, to the north depicting two slender black and white creatures with with skull-like faces and elongated teeth. And in, in like a grotesque portrayal of a family portrait, they're like holding hands and grinning towards you. Uh, Ugh. Yes. Um, there are scattered candles, crystals, and other occult accoutrements around the room, maybe suggesting some sort of magical project in process. It's unclear. God damn it. Another door stands in the southern end this magical process of the progress room. is pissing me off. Can I roll Arcana on the magical process and pro- process? Yeah, and uh, this, well, these are occult accoutrements. You can go Arcana, but if you feel better with a cult. You can do a cult. Let's see. A brief glimmer. Brief glimmer of something over <laughs> an 11. Now a natural five. Where was the painting in the room? Uh, to the north. To the north? I want to go look at the painting. It was a 13 of them. It's like right there along that wall and then to the north. Uh, the little north alcove has all of those little knickknacks. Um, could I... Um, Brother Amius will look under the bed. Classic. Under the bed? Spin down, yeah, look under. See if he sees any There's monsters. There's a skull-faced creature smiling. No! <laughs> Dude, that's not funny, man. I, how you doing? Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm going to do an occultism roll. You, uh, you guys know how to get out of here? Oh, 25. Natural Ooh, 19. Whoa. 20. On fire. 5. Natural 19. There's all sorts of little things there, but some of them look useless to you. But one thing really stands out. It is like a small onyx dog. Radiates magical energy. Just, just now. That's Onyx. Onyx. 
Uh, <laughs> Six fans. <laughs> <laughs> Along with me and friends. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I pick up the jewel. It's, it's like a little statue, like an inch high statue. Oh, it's a, okay. Of a dog. The dog. Okay. So this seems significant, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's radiating magic. Oh, it's ra- oh, it's a small little. He goes to Asta and is just like, does this mean anything to you? There's some power coming from it, but I can't tell what it is. Huh. Asta takes it. Does this remind her of like the Gorgas at all? Like the dark? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it creeps, it buggles out, by yeah. the way, because it is a dog and it is magic. It's like, he's almost afraid to touch it. But so he did he occultism. It. Could I do arcana on the magic that's coming off of Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah, okay. you want to identify the magic of this. I just have been kind of flavoring, instead of having you guys use detect magic, if you t- if there's magic there, I'm, sh- I'm assuming you guys are detecting magic, and so you have this, you're feeling psychic energy from it, you try to figure out what it is. It does resemble a Gorga but it actually looks more like an actual hound. Hmm. I rolled a 23 on Arcana. It is a wondrous figurine. Oh. Of an onyx dog. So if you take oh, it cool. and you place it on a flat surface, you can activate it and have a guard dog Yeah. Uh, at your Whoa. side. Whoa. Whoa. Asta. So we can sleep. Very carefully gives it back to Buggles. And she says, this is a very special item, Buggles. It will protect you. If you place this down, it will become a real dog. <gasps> oh, 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 And she, 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 takes, it, she takes it back. Oh, she goes, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? What is what he's afraid of dogs. I just yeah. gave the, he He's he afraid of dogs. He's pulling his, pull his hood down over his face, like crying. He's like, oh, oh what did you do to him? Until he think goes over to try to comfort you. Buggles, come over here. She won't hurt you over here. Mean Asta didn't mean it. He's afraid of a lot of stuff. I didn't realize he was afraid. I thought it was just horses. Oh, no. He it's found so much more than horses. He found this. It's a very special item. It will become a guard dog when you place it down. It's very magical. Probably worth a lot of money. Just a, not not that. <laughs> uh, but the guard I saw your fanged not, smile at the mention of. Not that I would take it. He found it. I mean, but he doesn't want it. We're not going to be able to use it. We Should might as well sell it. it. It would set him off. I will, uh, Buggles, do you want to hold on to it? That it's way. very that powerful way, and- No one could ever set it down but you. As he sort of very tentatively sort of crosses the room and he takes out like a, like a handkerchief out of the, the pocket in his, <laughs> in his cloak and he like picks it up with a handkerchief and like balls it up and, and puts it in his little like satchel. He's just like, thank you, yes. Thank you. Sorry. It's all right. It's okay. No harm done. Now you have all the power. Isn't that funny? <laughs> you can hear it growling in your pocket. <laughs> muffled only by the handkerchief. <laughs> um, muffled only. Is it worth trying to perceive the room anymore, or do we think we've seen everything? We've done, between our various checks, we've gotten There's a lot going on in here. Uh, I want to give you a little more information about this. You yeah. know how it works. Like, you activate it with a couple of actions, and it can be used once per week. Oh. And once it's activated, the dog is, uh, you know, a part of it's, it, exists for six hours, basically. So, you can use it to track, you can use it to hunt, you can use it to attack. Oh. You have to command it, and it will do things to the best of its ability. This and is it, another thing that goes all the way back to like original D&D as well. This is one, a wondrous item like a yeah, yeah. But question would would, would Austin know that this wouldn't be like beholden to Kanipo? Like it's if we activate it, it's not going to like turn on us, right? You think it's more like a genie like it's uh, okay. you you now doesn't remember every time it becomes sentient. Right, you're not my master. Okay. Cool. That uh, is really cool. Searching the rest of the room, if you guys are taking time in here, not obviously the same amount of time as you took in the library, um, a couple things jump out. One, the the uh, the layer of dust on everything makes you think like this room has never been slept in, hmm. or hasn't been in a long time at least. It looks completely un. The bed is made. The bed is made. Everything is like very regal, um, but. That layer of dust, there's no way that anyone has used this for a long time, if ever. Second thing that um, seems strange to you 
is that along that northern edge of the room, just beyond the painting, up towards that alcove, you see that like, you know, all the walls are made up of the, the tree, you know, the previous room, the tree was like carved to make the shelves for the books. Well, same thing here, but along that edge, it looks like hunks of the tree flesh have been smoothed, like smooth and removed, almost like they were, they were going to be turned into another doorway leading east but the project was never completed or abandoned. They were carving out a new doorway. It looks like they were carving out a new doorway here, but it was never quite finished. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm sorry, where is that on the map? That is just uh, along that northern, northeastern wall, just above where I pointed out where the painting is. Um, So kind of like just above where Zephyr's standing, it seems like a door was meant to go there. Um, then Can we look behind the painting? Sided against it, behind the painting. Safe. There's a key. Um, <laughs> can I do an I'll check on the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this? What, is this? what is this? What does this do? Do I put it in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Some sort of feeding mechanism? Some sort of pacifier? Can I ro- uh, roll a check on the figures in the painting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go to town at first. Yeah, sure, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to myself some more. <laughs> what am I rolling? Um, uh, you're trying to recall knowledge to see if you know anything about them. There's no sort of... Arcana, occultism, religion. Yeah, so like if it's religion, it's like, are these important religious figures? <laughs> arcana is like, it's giving off any... I would say Arcana would probably be the society? closest. Society? Or society. Like, are these important historical figures? seems to be what you're wearing. Natural six. No. The striped skin. 14. Striped skin like the, the the statue when you first came in had some striped markings to it. That grandiose statue where the tooth fairies emerged. Um, but that doesn't quite look like this. Um, there also seems, I don't know if this is a foundry thing. I don't know if, uh, it seems like the light is not working the same in here. Is that just an accident? Your light? It feels like it. Oh, it's working. Don't forget there's still bioluminescent light coming from this. If I delete that creature. Yeah, you've got light. No? Yeah, yeah, I do. I it's do. just a little dim. Okay, so it, so it's um, uh, the light that was coming in from the bioluminescent creature is making it bright light? That was that brighter. Was like, yeah. Got it, got it. Okay. So you're still sense. like 20 regular, 20 dim. 20 regular, 20 dim, yeah. Yeah. That like um, almost carved door... Can I like knock on it to see if it's hollow on the other side? Like, is there a room already there and they were making a door? Yeah. Or is it just solid? Give it a knock. Doesn't even matter what dice I use, you know? <laughs> yeah, it does. We're all rolling you got great. this. Perception knock? It's not the worst. It's a, it's a 13. 13. Perception. Lucky 13. Okay, you're bringing some scintillating energy. <laughs> <laughs> Some people enjoy playing this game. When, when the rolls are cold, you know it sucks. We all know. I want to investigate with Zephyr, but she's not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you knock, and it, it doesn't sound particularly hollow. So maybe that, you know, there it had to be dug more to get to something else. You don't know if they were building a tunnel or just a doorway, a hallway. Um, but it doesn't. It sounds pretty solid. Or if they were starting an entire room from this this doorway. Mm. Maybe they wanted a, you know, a non-suite bathroom. Yeah. Sure. And you couldn't get the permits? Who wouldn't? <laughs> that tied everything up. Yeah. <laughs> that held Ready up the that. whole process. All right, Talitha will listen at the door to the south. Door to the okay. south. Uh, all right, there we go, 22. You listen to the door to the south. And looking at the map here, you wonder if that's at all connected to that door in the previous room that Brother Ramius listened to. Yeah, the big room. Does it sound big in there? And the reason you think that is it does sound big in there. <laughs> does it sound big? Sound big? You're like right next to it. I'm not going to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> does Francis laughed. Come on, man. <laughs> it sounds Francis a show, man. Play with us. I gave Francis the laugh. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds cavernous. Uh, you get that same feeling that Brother Ramius described in its bigness. 
All right. Uh, well, taking the bigness into account, I will open the door. And we'll be back right after this break. Damn it. Still relying on digital dice rollers for your random number generating needs? There has to be a better way. Now, there is. With the new Glass Cannon Podcast Campaign 2 cast dice sets, you can generate random numbers right on the table. No more hassling with smartphone apps or programs on the internet. No more judgmental stares from the Matthews of the world. And now when you meet that special someone out at the club on a Friday night and they ask you if you own any sets of gemstone dice, you can say yes on your way to sex town. Get your Glass Cannon Podcast Campaign 2 cast dice set today at glasscannonnetwork.com slash store. But order now. Quantities are extremely limited. Except for Joe Dice. We have plenty of Joe Dice. Talitha opens the door. Ka-chung. Oh! Shut the door, shut the door. Shut Close it. Shut the door, shut oh. the door. I, I can't say, see it. Oh. oh, this is cavernous as fuck. Austin can't like, see it. The, <laughs> big, the bigness, though, is not the uh, the chief. My chief concern. Oh no, no. Austin can't see it. I can't see. I can only see that it's huge. I can't see anything. What do you see? Her angle. I'll I see. see. What I see. I see a large table at the center with <gasps> manacles and a large smear of blood. Oh, oh. I see it too now. The and that is oh. an entire humanoid just. And then blood over on the side table, table or the uh, the sideboard, if you will. Mm-hmm. Has uh, what look like uh, surgical saws and oh, other oh, this is where he's implements doing of the torture. experiments. Oh no! There is a stained wooden operating table with a gutter around the edge of it. Oh come on! And a variety of leather restraints standing in the middle of this enormous theater. Theater. Uh, a rack of immaculate surgical tools stands along the western wall while a counter to the east which uh, maybe only Talitha can see uh, holds papers and pens and uh, notes you look down at the floor and the floor has been carved in these elaborate geometric designs like parquet there is uh, an like al- butter. <laughs> there's an alcove to the northeast that, not unlike the artist's studio, uh, holds a bed. Of course, instead of a thing of rags, there's an actual bed there. There are doors uh, exiting every which way, and it seems like to the south, there is a staircase built into the floor, leading up (laughs) and out of sight. <laughs> it goes a ways too. It's I, I'm not seeing most of this. I, I, we have to get in the room first. Yeah. All I'm seeing is the, t- the examining table with the blood. Perception check to see if there's anyone in the room from where we're, where I'm standing. Okay. Saying. Yeah, I'll do the same from where I, from what I can see. 18. Uh, 16. Why not? Ooh, natural 17. Bam. 21. Oh. 21. I can't I can't really see anything in character, but that is a natty 19 for a 23. Okay. Are you listening? Hark. Hark. So Zephyr and Asta, sort of looking past everyone, you all, no one sees anyone, but you both get the sense that someone has been in here recently. <laughs> oh, unrelated. Um, since my flurry of blows, when I use it for my hands, I can also use it, use it with my feet. Mm-hmm. I'm erasing the pre-notion of, oh, I put my bow away. I, have, I always have it in my hand because I can still use Flurry of Blows with like my hands and feet and still have my bow in my other hand. Always oh, that's great. have it. Just a side note. You've always be first. bowing. Yeah. Yep. A- B- always B- be bowing. B- a- B- B- so I have my bow in my hand, B- B- casually. <laughs> casually have your bow in your hand. What do you do? Uh, Talitha will step into the room. Ooh, there's a bed here too. Yeah, I described the bed, but now you can see it. Now I can see it. Okay. Pee. Ramus comes in. Zephyr, Buggles, and Asta are slowly making their way in. So he goes right through. over to those notes. Yeah, I'll read them. Okay. Um, Buggles, are you staying at the door? Uh, I'm trying to come in. Oh, I'm in. Okay, Buggles is in there with Ramius right at the doorway. Ramius is light emanating out, just covering the, uh, the table yeah. covered in blood. Asta and Zephyr walk over to the surgical instruments. Talitha walks over to the notes. 
at the instruments, you notice everything looks perfect. Like if they're being used for experiments here, then they've been cleaned and shined and placed in a perfectly ordered fashion from smallest to largest, grouped perhaps with some sort of order that you don't understand as you are not surgeons or whatever the people in this place are. You come over to the notes and start looking through them. There are diagrams, carefully illustrated diagrams of different people in various stages of being vivisected. And they're very, very um, descriptive and very highly illustrated so that you see what these people look like. And it looks like you see them as they were when they first arrived here, but then you see what happened to them through various experiments. Some of them have like elongated limbs. Some of them, their faces have been stripped of all muscle and fat. And others have other very strange, grotesque transformations. Give me a perception check. What is going on? 24. That is 17. You're looking at all these different people and you see what looks like the most recent subjects. A youngish woman, an older man, and then a younger man, and the thing that jumps out at you is he has a wooden septum piercing. And at that moment, in the back of the room, a figure materializes out of like thin air and it is a, a feminine figure and she has long black hair and she's wearing a mask over her face, a mask that seems to just float in front of whatever is behind it. Her clothing seems to not be completely corporeal, like it almost seems to be made of shadow stuff. And not unlike the picture you saw in the previous room, everything, including the mask, is... Uh, decorated in black and white stripes, except for her hands, which are covered in blood. And she looks at you and just shakes her head. She says, you, Kanipo chose you over me. Obviously you can't see her face. She points and she says, they are mine. You fleshy interlopers. Roll for initiative. Oh no. Seems like these people are not even in direct contact with Kenny. I don't get it. I've never been called that before. <laughs> fleshy fleshy, fleshy interloper. No, I don't know how to take that. <laughs> fleshy interlopers. She interlopers. What like did I... you get? Zephyr. I was going to, oh. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Confused me. The first person on my list. 23. 20. Nice. Three. Beautiful. For Zephyr, Talitha. 12. Oh. Brutal. I'm assuming I was perceiving. You Zephyr. need to do better. Yeah, I know. True. It's natural five. Asta. Six. The fleshy S interloper threw me oh. off. Oh. Oh. Confused. Brother Ramius. Is that a rollable initiative? I rolled a two. <laughs> Jeez. Poop. Stinky. Stinky. Uh, 17. 17. And finally, Buggles. Uh, 14. 14 for Buggles. Let me guess. guess. Enemies in this game just always roll. Oh, <laughs> you, you lie about so every weird. initiative I mean, look, roll. I pre-roll every single initiative before we start. And uh, yeah, uh, Mask Woman has a 27. What's her, what's her perception? What did you roll? Right. Um, let's see. Like if I you mean. rolled, uh, if you rolled a nat if twenty, you a, all nine, your a natural nine, and she's just. I rolled eight. a seventeen. So, so <laughs> I want to start tracking 10. every <laughs> initiative. So, die what's roll. her her perception yeah. is a plus ten. Mm -hmm. uh, here's what us. she looks like. 
Huh? Uh, huh. I looked oh. at you. <laughs> if you were oh, because <laughs> it looks like. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> I'm Whoa. cosplaying as the enemy. Oh, very cool. That is very. She looks a uh, like a like a murderous hey. Harlequin or something. It looks like you know yes. what? Actually, she does look like a like the Eldar one of the Eldar Harlequin from uh, Warhammer 40k. It looks bit. like under the mask, her face would just be like smoke or something. Yeah, is her yes. hair smoky? I, I mentioned that like it looked like the mask almost was just floating in front of whatever oh. it was behind it, and uh, the 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 image I think doesn't quite drive home the way I described it in that like the clothing, the way it moves, it doesn't seem to be made up of like just cotton. Um, and remember what she said. Mm-hmm. Nepo chose you, you over me. Over me? They are mine. Talk about. You fleshy interlopers. Have we met Kanipo before? In the missing moment, perhaps? Mm. Oh, maybe. Well, yeah. Uh, maybe. He knew, what we, he knew what we looked like enough to have someone uh, to commission a painting of us. Well, he was also there. He was there. Yeah. But, Makes you wonder if we've had experiments done on us already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or sent back in. Our markings. Someone marked us. Our markings. Our, uh, yes. special abilities. Our deviant traits. Yeah. Deviant traits. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be so terrifying. It's something we don't talk about enough is like not knowing what happened during that lost time. Terrifying. Yeah. It's got to be very- That's the whole reason for mm -hmm. this investigation. That's why I'm like, I don't give a shit about Kenipo if it doesn't point to exactly what happened the night of the missing moment, right? Well, like, there's also that's the mystery. thing about ending the world. So I care a little bit about that. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> eh. We don't have to live here. <laughs> All right, Let's so rock. here's what we're going to do. Uh... She is going to slide up to Talitha. And she is going to... I found the combat. What did you do to you him? You are never going to get to fight. <laughs> it's just, it ends up being the placement. You're, you're, you're like the party lead. It's like you and Asta. You went one way, Asta went the other. She slides up to you and uh, goes to touch you with a spell. <laughs> she goes to touch you. And you feel very, very cold. Oh no. Give me a fortitude save of the basic variety. 18. <laughs> 18. Give me a premium fortitude save. <laughs> that is a fail. Okay. Fortitude plus. Oh man. Orange is my worst save. All right, so she goes up. Poor Talitha. And. Uh, cast this heightened jaw. And it's going to be. Uh, nine points of void damage. Void damage. Void damage. <laughs> and she's just like sucking like entropy out of your body, just like sucking. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was just a fail. It wasn't a critical fail. It could have been a lot worse, but just <laughs> starts sucking that out of you. And that is her turn. It now is <laughs> Zephyr's turn. Ooh. Um. <laughs> Ooh. First action. Ooh. Uh, second action, first action. I'm gonna move up. Second action. Um, Yikes! <laughs> you have one more action. I'm gonna move up behind her here, so she'll be flanked in between uh, Talitha and I. What is your perception? My perception is mm -hmm. a plus four okay. at default. <sighs> a couple things happen. As you move exactly in that direction, No. you don't notice no. that the floor gives way. <gasps> oh no. It's all right. The f floor opens up like a trap door is triggered as you step on it, and it opens up quickly. Give me a roll to try and grab an edge. Okay, is that athletics Reflex or acrobatics? Uh, it can be grab uh, grab an edge could be athletics or. Um, oh, can it? Yeah, I believe so. Let me just make sure. Save. Um, grab an edge because I, I read this reflex earlier. Reflex is also my best save. If you grab an edge, you can uh, you can do acrobatics or reflex. Okay. So Perfect. Acrobatics. I'll do acrobatics. Well, if it had to happen to one of us. Yeah, this is like the best person. No, okay. Mm. 92. No. Oh, oh my God. God. 10. Oh. Okay, you fall. Oh. Okay. And a couple things happen. How far? You fall 20 feet. Okay. You take 10 bludgeoning damage from but the fall. But cat fill. Oh, ah. cat fall. Yeah. Okay. 10 so, feet shorter. All right, so then you don't take any damage from the fall. This feet. Oh, that is a good feat. Yeah. However, you will take some damage from the spikes at the bottom oh, of this pit. Oh, spiked oh, no. pit! 
You take six piercing damage from the metal spikes jutting up from the pit's floor, and you feel something seeping within your skin. There are other bodies lying around you at the bottom of this, like, corpse disposal pit. They just just tilt the table up and slide the corpses down to the pit. Yep. Give me a fortitude save. Okay. (laughs) Kate always triggers trap. So tired of rolling dice. (laughs) Uh, 15. Everything seems to be just fine. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> Some sort of corpse oh. rot. Uh-huh. So now you are, you know, first action was you moved, you triggered all this, and you fell down. Now you're 20 feet below. Oh. You have to climb up. Is it climbable? It is climbable. Well, that was my first action was yep. falling into the death pit. Yep, so it's athletics to climb, and then what is climb First, speed? you got to get up. So yeah, first, second action. Come on. Stand up, navigate these spikes. Something feels weird Third inside action, of you. Third action, you can climb, and you're yeah. going to be, it's like five feet per action. Yeah. It's going to take you like two more rounds. I think eventually like a monk can do these things faster if I take certain feats, but it's not anything that I have currently, although I am good at climbing with my acrobatics and athletics. So yeah, I get up. And I start climbing. Okay, give me an athletics check to see how far you make it. If you critically succeed, you can move double, which would be 10 feet, right? I believe so. Yeah. I don't think Kate critically succeeded. 12. 12. All right, you see, so you, you start climbing, you're grabbing handholds, you're like lifting yourself up from these other corpses, and you get five feet up, 15 feet to go. <laughs> Brother Amy, you see Zephyr be like, got this. Whoa! <laughs> Zephyr, no! It's amazing, though, the way you landed. You landed, and the spikes went, like, right through your feet, so you oh, didn't... Oh, how? Uh, uh, you landed very delicately on the spikes, and you was like... <laughs> <laughs> Brother Ramius. Brother Ramius is going to move around uh, the table. Um, he is just like when Zephyr fell from the rope, from the cut rope. It oh. triggers something in him that he, he cannot stop but uh, move toward... Uh, somebody who has fallen and he co- goes up to you and sees that you're already like working your way back up and makes this realization thinks maybe next round I could even help you like pull you up for the last little bit or whatever but for now he just looks up and we see this hatred in his eyes tired of these outsiders uh, and their demonic influence trying to um, hurt his friends and so he is going to fire off a divine lance at uh, the creature Nice. Um, so here we go uh, 13 to hits. It hits Talitha. <laughs> it hits Talitha for oh, max damage. I wonder so if a divine is- lance, when it misses, if it explodes or if it just like hits the back wall or if it just... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it means when it misses. That's firework. In this case, let's just say somehow it gets consumed into the like shadow stuff that she's made of. It makes you like worried that she's so unholy and she's just eating it. I don't know. Like a black hole eats light. Brutal. Any actions left? Nope. That was three actions. Buggles. Buggles is going to move <laughs> up. Buggles. <laughs> He's going to take a step up to... Everyone knows it's, it's Buggles. Buggles. It's He's me. going to sort of brace himself behind the leg of this abattoir kind of table, this uh, this yeah. autopsy table. And he's going to ignite the Roy Mustang. Nice. <laughs> Boom. That's awesome. 21. 21 hits. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, six points of damage. Boom. Six points of fire. Fire yes. damage. The mask shudders, expression Triggering her weakness to fire. Behind you, awesome. she immolates. <laughs> Talitha, it's your turn. You're standing next to this thing. Heat has been on, removed on. from your body. Yeah, from Talitha's perspective, she just got, just kind of like her, the heat of her body drained from her. Zephyr started running on the table and just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Things aren't looking great. Um, I'm going to do a devise, a stra- I'm going to devise a stratagem. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to, it's an 11, so I will use that. I'm going to use, take my free knowledge check first, though, for my known weakness. Free knowledge check. Um, a re- free recall knowledge. This is sure. going to be an important recall knowledge. Yeah, so I probably should have done big. it. If I 18 Arcana. 18 Arcana. This is a creature that has not appeared in the Glass Cannon podcast. Ooh. Oh. It has appeared on SideQuest Side Sesh. What? what? Oh, no. It's a Shay. 
Yeah. Oh. Shea. We didn't do so great about the sh- uh, with the Shay last no, time. Oh no, Shays have been very, very bad to the party. Didn't the Shay cause the TPK? Was it yes. involved in the TPK? TP Shay. TP Shay. TP Shay. Um, uh, yeah, this is a Shay. How do you spell Shay? S. No, you can't Google that. I'm not Googling. <laughs> I'm just taking for, her just notes. For Gmail to yourself. I'm taking notes. J S H A Y. A Y. Okay. I'd say she'll never. <laughs> I was looking at you. Wait. Like, oh, I know what. I just wanted you to look up Dan and Shay. How do you spell it? S H A E. Don't worry, she's not gonna mail it. Yeah, it's I'm never gonna send she'll it. She'll forget about it. It's not hooked up to the internet. We didn't give Sydney the, uh, <laughs> the Wi-Fi. The, the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Code. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm oh, yeah. uh, that. Even with my, even if you, I'm using my intelligence bonus to. Uh, attack with the rapier. That's almost. Uh, I can give you a piece of useful information too, if there's oh, something because you you succeeded. But just one piece. Is there something you want to know? Anything she's weak to? Um. No, I can tell you that she's resistant to cold and void. Mm. Void. Good to know. Which would be I share that information. Um, she's resistant to cold. <laughs> I was I was playing a game. I was I'm running a traveler home game because I'm, I'm obsessed, uh, and I was playing, and something happened I had never seen, in all the years we've been playing, all the games I've played, uh, something happened that I've never seen happen before, which is somebody did the equivalent of a knowledge check, and then I was like, do you share that information? And they were just like, no. <laughs> like, and all, like, they weren't being funny, they were just like, be, they were like, in the moment I would not share that information, and I was yeah. like, <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> what an interesting role-playing choice. Um, <laughs> uh, Okay. Uh, all right. I'm gonna. Tr- I'll see if this hits. So I'm. Gonna, I will use the attack. That is a 19 to hit. Yes. Yeah. I figured. Damn it. All right. Uh, and then. I see. Looking for a way in, and it just you stick it right into shadow stuff. Uh, okay. Talitha is then going to move and hope that she doesn't have an AOO, and she will move to the western edge of the western northwestern corner of the room, uh, and that will be her turn. You move to the northwestern corner of the room. Uh, okay. By the door that leads back into what looks like would be the door to the library. Yeah, smart. I mean, you've been a, a punching bag for these enemies thus far within Kanipo's court. She's weak to cold. She's resistant to cold and void. She's weak to cold? Great. No. <laughs> She's weak to I'm cold. Oh. I'm empowered by void. <laughs> Thassa's turn. Okay. Um, can I, how high is this uh, butcher block table? So high, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, was, that table has it's got about no eyes. Two and a half feet, same same as this table. So easy, she could realistically run, jump on the table, and jump over the other side. It's interesting that you mentioned that, Joe. Uh, who Leave loves, me out of this. Loves to point out when you specifically are, uh, do something he doesn't care for. I love. That to, is I love not to, how that conversation one, happened. One, I believe it. Two, go on. <laughs> two two episodes ago, I ran on a table. Before yes, and before we started recording last week's episode, he pulls me aside and goes, "Listen, I didn't want to make Sydney feel bad yet again for something that she did." That was, uh, <laughs> say more. Not even say what more. I said. Incorrect. But he's like, technically, leap in and of itself is an action, so you can either move, leap, move. Or if you you can leap move. Why can't I move, an take a large step onto a table. That's a second action. And take a step off. That's a leap, you're leaping onto the table. A large step, are you 16 feet tall? <laughs> you mean a large step. Can you stand, mm-hmm. can you stand if you, up? Could you step up a three foot table? You're gonna make her right step there. up onto this yeah. table? Let's see if you can just step in one. And her skirt? And that, this, I, look how smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the flow of combat. That's a full action. Actually, for you, it might be three actions. <laughs> if, I wasn't, if I wasn't wearing a dress, I could have done that so easily. Um, okay, so you're you're telling me no? I'm uh, No, Joe said it. Oh, what are you saying? Because you're uh, my here's GM. What I, here's what I'm the saying. Leap action. Here's what I'm saying. There is, there is a uh, leap action where, yeah, you would have to leap to traverse the distance without going around, but it appears you could just, go, just around. go around. Yeah, I'm just gonna go In around. one move action. I'm gonna go around. Yeah, if you've got the movement. I do, I you just. You have 30 feet or you're a 25 footer? I'm a 25 footer. Okay, you might have it. I could get to. Oh, you know what, put, let me, put yourself back there and let me reveal the pit to you guys because you would know what the, uh, okay. the size of the pit. It's actually reveal a Oh, pit. Pit. Oh, yeah. It's actually Open a big, this pit up. It's a big pit. Oh, oh. 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 Never mind. you cannot run around. That's a big pit. So that changes. She can go around the other way. Can I? Yes. 25 fizzle. And 20. Yep, I can. I can get diagonal yeah. the other way. You can. 
So I will run. Okay. Do, 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 do. Run around. around. Right when you get next to her. Oh my God. She just <laughs> winks out of existence. Son of a bee. And appears next to Brother Ramey. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> just like blips in and out. All right. After you use your entire complement of movement. So that was my first action and totally changes what I'm going to do. Gosh darn it. How cool is that? I'm going to do... Not cool at all. You know what? Hello. I was going to do a move <laughs> and a spell strike, but I will just cast a spell instead from a distance. Okay. So I'm going to cast... From a distance. <laughs> phase Bolt, one of my cantrips. Uh, I point my hand, or I point my katana, and uh, I'm going to make a ranged spell attack. It shoots out of your katana. That's, yeah, it shoots out of my katana. Sweet. Uh, that's going to be a 23 to hit. That's a hit. Okay. Oh, excellent. And actually, I even reduce, if there's any circumstance bonuses to your AC, I get to reduce it by two when I do this specific Whoa. spell. Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. Uh, okay, on a success, I deal 1d4 piercing damage. Plus my spell casting It's probably ability. a circumstance bonus for, uh, for cover. Right? Like, that's what cover probably is. Yeah, so like it could be... Yeah, phase so the phase bolt, bolt would go would have through. Evade cover. That's, that's so cool. Pretty cool. So that's going to be a three. Three points of damage. Three total? Yes. Real cool. It's a cantrip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of my level one spells. Boom. I know. That's why you were like, I'll rest. Yeah, I would, loved, I would have loved to rest. And that's my turn. That's two actions. Top of round two. Mask woman. Oh, my God. And uh, she's next to me. All right. I, try, I tried. See ya. See ya. It's been a good fun playing with you guys. Bye. I won't oh, be bringing back a cleric. Just man, so and I mean, because of where the pit is, you are trapped yeah. there, you know? And like, she could stay there all day and like maybe Asa can come over. The last time she did that, boom. So uh, standing next to Brother Ramius, oh, man, I mean, I gotta, I gotta touch you. Mm -mm. Give me a fortitude save. Basic. You basic. You basic. Basic critical fail coming right at you. Oh! Come on, Norse Foundry. <laughs> Come on! 21. Oh. Mm. You're all right. Hey! Oh. North Foundry! <laughs> Why are you under generating me? <laughs> <laughs> so you'll just take three points of void damage. Just, you feel that little bit of cold enter your body. I didn't even feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, down three. Uh, and then she'll attempt to stab you in the chest. With what? With a dagger. <clears throat> 20. Hit. A couple things are going to happen. First, you're going to take seven points of piercing. Oh, damage. come on. Not unlike her chill touch, you also take four points of cold damage. The dagger, as it enters you, pierces your skin. <clears throat> Blood comes out, and you just feel ice in your veins. Uh, yeah, this is, it's just really hard. It's really, really hard, okay? She leans in. You are not worthy. Uh, uh, and he's just terrified. Zephyr. I'm gonna climb up the wall. Just remind you, you only fall on a critical failure, which would be a one. Why do you say that? Just wanted to let you know. <laughs> What are the odds that she'd roll a, a, just a one on this roll? Saying. I've already rolled so head. many ones. If you succeed in all three of these checks, you will be up by the end of your three round. Three of these checks, you crit, well, Then you might get an action at the end. That's um, athletics I'm rolling? Yes. Natural 19. There you Whoa. go. There you that's go. 26. Oh, 26. That is a crit. That's crit. Oh! All right, oh, so you're now feet. five feet from you're the Five lip. feet away. Grab her five legs feet. and pull her into the pit. Can she do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could grapple her. Yeah, I guess you could. Grab and reposition. Uh, you can shove. You can shove, yeah. You would be like a grab. If you get, to, you can't do it this turn, but it might be something to think about. Basically, you can. She could. She could. Grab. She climb right now. She still needs to climb. Right, you, you have You're still two, five you have feet two more actions. Yeah. So you gotta yes. climb. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, what okay. Happens? Let's not get too excited, guys. Oh, that one's good too. That's natural fifteen. Oh, five and seven are always hard. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Um, <laughs> five and seven are always hard. All right, so that's another crit. So you're able to get up, scamper right up and out of there. 
Yeah, so the question is, uh, you're wondering if you can grapple her and throw her in? Like, as I'm coming out, like, grab her, chuck her in. <laughs> uh, you can you can attempt a grapple check with your third action, and then next round try to reposition her if you so desire. You can, you, uh, hmm. you can shove as a single action, but I think you'd have to be in position, so you have, to, you have to be able to shove her back into the pit. So that wouldn't work, but... Yeah. Also... I, I mean, grappling would be cool. It's just you don't have that third action to pull. What I would say is if you wanted to grapple her and fall backwards, you could both go in, but then you'd be exposing yourself to that. Yeah, and he's going to make you roll on a stupid high DC, and right. then you're going to impale yourself. So no, I'm grapple climbing is just up. like a, I guess, the so I'm saying for the whole shebang. DC. I climb out the hole. Can I be like, yeah? Since I can't sure. climb up anywhere else because it's all blocked. Mm-hmm. And the second I fucking get up there, oh. I whack her. <laughs> Across the face yes. with my flurry of blows. Yeah. I go left hook. Poof. Right in the head. Left hook. Poof. Uh sorry. Everything has to stop. What? I forgot about the bow. She didn't I don't have it out. She did, wasn't unconscious. I mean, you did you said I was just you, climbing. You said your bow is always out. Yeah, I was just climbing and I fell. So if you fell yeah. and the bow was in your hand, you lost the bow. That's not true. Oh, okay, if the bow is in your hand, you have to stow the bow before you can climb. So we're one action short. You're one action short, yeah. Why are you doing this? <laughs> I'm just telling you what's going on. Isn't no. it the rules? That's not the rules. That's you trying to Why can't you let us well, have fun? That is the rules of the game. You, you can't climb. You have to climb with two hands. You have to climb with empty hands, yeah. So that's just one thing we forgot. And you did make a big point about you have the bow in hand, so you just stow it. So just make one more. Actually, you're out, you, and that's it. That's you crit twice, so you're out, but your third action is drawing the bow. Unless you want to just start punch, I'm no. not drawing the bow. It doesn't need the bow out to start punching. She doesn't need okay. the bow. Joe is I'm saying she would have to. She would her have to spend an extra action to stow the bow oh. before to she climb started. Climbing. So now her freedom. third action. Was I think climbing we've already moved out. our hands off of the chess pieces, <laughs> <laughs> and I just climbs. rolled two crits to climb. So, but that's a that's an action from a previous round. We've yeah. had to stow the from bow. From two previous rounds. No, no, it was the, the first round. round. It's, only, it's only the second. Eleven round. rounds ago. <laughs> so basically, hard. last round, you fall, one action, move, one action. Second action, get up. Third action, grab your bow. Unless you leave the bow down. Fourth action, stow it. So, so. we're being nice, actually. No. Yeah. Right, so that's also, the end of your turn. She can also, free action, have dropped the bow. Yeah, she can leave it at the bottom of the pit and if still If you want to leave action. the bow down there, then I, you've got then you still have this action. I have to go get it after we kill that's this true. lady. Or and can you force pull it up? I don't know. <gasps> I feel chance. like my turn's getting convoluted at this oh, actually, point, so I feel like it's over. Yeah, actually, well, we, we messed around with this before. We let people climb with the weapons. I think Lucky's done it. Yeah, and we're not we're really not supposed to do it. Yeah. Uh, I think you, uh, I mean, you could leave it down there if you want, and just we could get it later, and I could maybe use my deviant ability to get it. That would be fun. I mean, yeah, we could do that. Just because I'm not going to use it in this room if she can blink. Yeah, yeah. Even if I get far away from her. Um, oh, that's so frustrating. Yeah, I'm fine with retconning to say you leave it down there. That's kind of what we did without meaning to. Yeah, let's just do that because... You want to punch her? You're a monk, you're a ninja. Roll shitty on this. <laughs> Joe, I'm coming for you. Why oh, <laughs> me? I'm calling it. If he'll, you roll shitty on this? Yes. What does that have to do with the bow? She's going to kill your character. <laughs> I'm going to smack your character instead. So yeah, last action, flurry of blows, left hook to the head. Ooh, let's go. Ooh. Math, math, math. 23 to hit. Bam, bam, bam. Hit. Hit. And then the fortitude save stuff. Um, how do you want to do this, the order? Um, now, this stunning fist has the incapacitation trait, yes. right? Okay, and which means you can't do it to creatures that are of a higher level than you. I can't remember. No, their, their success has s- just stepped up. Right. Sure. Okay. So we'd have to critically fail to just fail. Right. Uh, so fort save. Uh, I, I doubt that I critically failed with a... If you didn't roll a one, you didn't critically fail. Yeah, no, I didn't. I just can't find my fourth save right now. I'm very fired up. Oh, but the, the rules for me, but the rules for him? <laughs> What's your fourth save? What? All right, I'll tell you. I can't you tell me. And, and while, while I'm doing- 19. 19? Is that a yeah, critical failure? No, that's a success. <laughs> it's just a flat out success. <laughs> um, <laughs> he critically succeeded. So I critically succeeded. Uh, so- <laughs> You fall back in the pit. Exactly. <laughs> this. You stun yourself. <laughs> <laughs> This is why you guys are my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so that's five points of damage from my fist, and then I take my foot, because I was, I thought I had my bow in my hand still, so I was gonna like do my uh, leg, but uh, like, a, like, like a, 
a right rear front kick, mm -hmm. but um, I'm still gonna do it even though my bow's not in my in my hand. So okay. love it. Next kick to one. the face. Ooh. 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 20, 23 again. Twenty three oh, to hit. Yeah. Wow. It's a hit. Amazing. <laughs> That's six points of damage. Nice. Six nice. points of so damage. And just confirming, head, she has no gut. resistances. Of That's any combined. Because those are combined. Just um, Unless that was a cold or void punch. Right. You're okay. Void punch. Void, void punch. 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 Void, void punch. kick. So she's bloodied. She's diseased, probably. But she's. She's still kicking. Kicking and fighting this void lady. You know who's not kicking? Brother Ramius. No. Brother Ramius is uh, uh, Zephyr's up and out, so he is going. He he just has to run away from this woman. Uh, he can't fight uh, this woman toe to toe, so he is going to step away. Uh, and whew, man, the thing is with this teleport, she can just show up at any moment. Uh, we don't know if she can do it all the time. It's true. It felt like a reaction to me. It, it was a reaction. So yeah. I mean, if it's like a reactionary spell, that's like can use it once, like a focus point or something like that, then we'd be good. But if she can move every time once per round that we move up to her, that's gonna, we're gonna have to do ranged attacks to get her out. Many game. <laughs> True. Metagaming. True. And uh, your knowledge check did not tell us anything about that ability. Well, I blame Troy, because he, he I, I asked for weaknesses and then he decided, and then he- uh, Well, yeah, you asked for weakness. I asked for weakness. It's I blame so you. often that none. we ask for like, weakness, she and Who's he next? just says they have none. Yeah, yeah. you know what You know what your question should be is, what is the coolest ability she can yeah. have? Yeah. yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> What's the most OP What's thing the, it has? I bet the, you there are people like, do she have weaknesses? And I say, no. What is okay, the whose turn is it now? What is the aspect of her you would least like us to know? <laughs> <laughs> like, but that's uh, not how a knowledge check works, where it's like, you can't be like, all right, I'm trying to understand what this creature is and what they do, and you're like, you didn't ask your brain for weeks. <laughs> right, I know. She's <laughs> holding a dagger. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I am going to move. Okay, you move away um, from the creature. Talitha, we need your help. Actually. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> um, oh, man, this is so tough because you have to do cold now, don't you, Bugs? Or no, you are you not all... Uh, you don't have to worry about that yet. No, I do. I, I, I do. always do. Yeah. Oh, Oscillating man. John. Oscillating John. Um, okay, so he's just going to move away back behind Buggles, and he will cast Guidance on Talitha uh, for your next roll, whether that ends up being a save or Battle attack. medicine would be more helpful. Oh, you're down? Yeah. She vo gave me oh, I can't damage. battle medicine you. That, that's why. I, I, I remembered that's why. Oh, because you did it to me today. Yeah. Oh, rats. Actually, I have, too. sorry, I have a question. We're immune. Yeah. I have a question because, so the, with the oscillating wave, it's just whenever I use magic, t it, it says the, the text of it that I have here. Whenever I, I use my magic to add or remove energy, I must balance it with the opposing force. So if I'm just using the cantrip, spell or cantrip as is, and not like, you know, like ignite, I'm not adding energy to it, it just has energy. Does that mean that I have to counterbalance it the next round, or does it mean or do I not have to do it? I don't know. I need a course on. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, that does, is this all the time? Or I thought that this only happened when no, you no, unleashed no. your this psyche. Is, no, 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 no. It's, it's that there's no condition for when I'm the, the unleashed psyche. It's just all the time. Okay. So that's what I don't, I don't know. Uh, it says that you are, yeah, cast a, a granite spell or a psi cantrip. And that's a cantrip, right? Ignition. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you cast a psi cantrip, adding energy means adding fire. Removing energy means making it cold. So it doesn't matter if you cast frostbite or ignition. It switches. E either way, you have to make it a, make it cold in the next one if the first one's fire. Yeah, okay. And so, I, yeah, I think that you're kind of... Th the thing that I was missing is that it says... Uh, um, when, when you use your magic to add or remove energy? No, no? The, because there's I, there's something in the text I'm, I'm missing here. But it's like you have to you have to make a decision when you cast the spell, 100 percent of the time. You have to make a decision whether to add energy or remove energy. The first time in an encounter that you cast a granted spell or a standard psychic like psychic cantrip from your conscious mind, decide whether you're adding energy yeah, or decide removing. whether you're yes. Yeah, so you can't not decide. Yeah, you can't just like cast the spell as it is. Choose not to run. Yeah, choose not to run. So that was that was what I was missing. So you can 
you can uh, stop writing your emails. <laughs> <laughs> you went, ah, fingers down, everybody. Well, <laughs> I, this, ultimately, the way I see this is like, this is just stupid. An oppo- no, it's an opponent <laughs> that is uniquely designed. No, yeah, that's, this is like one of the things where it, it really hurts me is like having an opponent that I know is resistant to one of these two types of yeah. damages I can do, and I have, have no choice. It. Yeah. yeah. It's, like a, it's like you get one round on, one round off. Right. Mm-hmm. Even fighting. It's yeah. tough. Uh, okay. Is that... Uh, that was Brother Ramus. Now it's Buggles. Buggles, uh, it's you, right? It is my turn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, you, were you done, Brother Ramus? Yeah, you moved back. Yeah, I moved guidance. back, and I granted aid to Talitha. Right, so now I'm it's sorry. Buggles. Guidance. guidance. To Buggles. Is what you're no, Talitha. Oh, to Talitha. Talitha. Oh, you did say. So, because I figured Buggles was on cold this round. Right. He's on cold duty this round. He's on cold. I'm on duty cold duty. This round. So Buggles, uh, is his psyche is unleashed. It's like pff, this like swirling mass of little tiny ice crystals. And I want to I want to uh, clarify something too. Uh, Matt Brody, our our ex- exceptional cinematographer, raised this question. He wasn't really sure what this was, so. The way Kuulakan is the spirit, is the this this vengeful spirit that these the the goblin folk like from where uh, Buggles comes from that they that they they have knowledge of, and Siaka Ak is this prophesied mythological hero that can harness the power of the Kuulakan to to uh, to free the the goblin like people. Mm. So that's cool. when I say Kuulakan, like that's that's the actual being that lives within him. Hmm. He hopes to be Siakaak one day, or the, his mentor thought that he might be Siakaak one day. Anyway, so Ku'u, the Kuulakan emerges mm-hmm. and surrounded by cold, <laughs> knowing that this is not going to affect this this creature in the way that he wishes it would. So instead, the Kuulakan reaches into Buggle's satchel produces the hound, places it down on the table, oh. and activates it. Oh! oh. 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 Awesome! Whoa. You reach down, place this tiny little figure on the table, and uh, it's two actions to activate it. Okay. And so you <laughs> activate it. And we'll see you next week. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if it's good or bad. Oh my god! What if it just turns right around on you? I don't know. I love that Buggles wouldn't do it, right. but Kula no, Khan would. Yeah, yeah exactly. Buggles would never do oh, it. No, but so the Kula Khan will. It's like you coward. Yeah, goes into the satchel, pulls out the. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah.